So today I'm in the greenhouse because I want to try and plant up this cranberry bush. Now I haven't got the best track record for cranberry bushes. I actually had two on the side of my shed in the hanging baskets. Um, I think I bought them last year and they didn't survive. <laughs> but what I've done is I've done lots of research and I found out why they didn't survive. Um, and basically I think it was because they were on the side of my shed. There was a bit of a overhang on the roof so they weren't getting any rainwater. And what I was doing is I was, I was um, using tap water to feed them. So um, that's a big no-no. <laughs> so I've learned from my mistake. Um, and I found this cranberry bush in being q actually, and it was only five pounds. So I thought I'd give it another go, just because I really, really love cranberries. I love them dried as well, so hopefully, fingers crossed, this one will be a bit better than the last two. Um, so I'm going to be planting it into a big pot. First things to do, though, is to put a couple of bits of broken terracotta into the bottom of the pot just to create a nice bit of drainage for it. Now cranberry bushes they like to be moist all the time but they don't like to be boggy so if you create a nice little drainage system there hopefully it will thrive. Um, also another thing that cranberries like is acid soil so I'm going to be using ericaceous compost to put into the pot. Now you can plant your cranberry bushes outside but obviously you need to be wary of what type of soil you have. So if you're gonna be planting them outside, the best thing to do really is to put them into a raised bed where you can obviously add the ericaceous soil um, or put them in, into a pot like I'm doing because they are ground covering plant, but they trail really nice as well. So hopefully it will trail over the edge of the pot nicely. So I'll just put the compost in and then I will plant up the cranberry bush. Right, so that's nearly full up with the ericaceous soil. So before I put the cranberry in, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. So this variety is called Pilgrim, and cranberries are actually deciduous, and they have these beautiful, delicate flowers in the spring, and then they have some really colorful foliage in the autumn. Now the fruits are ready to harvest from about September to October. So they are, they're just right for making your cranberry sauce at Christmas dinner, which would be really nice, hopefully. Um, they are high in vitamin C and they don't need any pruning, which is just perfect, really. I'm really, really hoping that this works. Now that I've done my research, because it really, really does pay off to research your plants before you think about buying them or before you think about looking after them, because sometimes it's not as easy as just plonking things in the ground and hoping that they grow like these cranberries they obviously need a little bit more work and a little bit more knowledge so hopefully this third one will produce some fruits now that I know how to look after it so I'll just take some more and that's about right Cranberries don't, won't actually produce any real good crops of fruit until they're about two years old, so there's a little bit of a wait yet for this one. But I don't mind waiting. So I'll just undo this because obviously it's a training plant, so it can trail over the side of the pot. Take the stick out. going to look a bit messy. I'll add some more ericaceous compost just to fill the pot up a little bit. So this is going to go up my allotment, it's not going to stay in the greenhouse. Cranberries are perfectly fine outside. What I'll do is I will place it in my fruit cage 
at the end of one of the paths so that obviously the fruits will be protected from the birds then and I won't have to compete for the cranberries which is always great so just give it a little firm down and then all that needs doing is watering it now like I said before you don't want to use tap water really to water your cranberry or your blueberry plants just because your tap water will most likely have lime in it which will undo all this hard work of creating a nice acid environment for your cranberry to grow in so I will use rainwater for this all the time I'm going to remember to use rainwater all the time for this and they like to stay moist as well not boggy just moist all the time so they're going to take a little bit more care than most plants but hopefully at the end I will be rewarded with lots and lots of cranberries <laughs> so I'm just going to place it outside the greenhouse just until uh, I can get it up the allotment so I'll just pop it there and we'll have a little look around the greenhouse because I've sown quite a few seeds so this is our new greenhouse well it's new to us anyway we got it second hand we found it on Gumtree actually and it didn't cost a lot which is great it's actually cedar and what we're going to do is we're going to paint it but we're going to wait until obviously it gets a little bit nicer either obviously into spring or into summer because then the wood can dry out completely and then we can paint it without there being the chance of rain um but i really love it i really love having a greenhouse i wish we got one sooner it's just been so great it's nice to wake up every morning and to just come down here and check on the seeds even though you know the seeds don't grow that quickly <laughs> it's nice just to come down and check them every single day um, and it's nice to be able to have somewhere where we can just sow and and pot on seedlings without having to do it outside on the table or on the ground uh, so it's really nice and we're having a little bit of a tidy up because we just got loads of trays everywhere and just loads of random things that need homes um, but as you can see, it's getting quite full up already with the seedlings because we have this little unit here as well, and that's full up. Um, but we've only got staging on this side. What we are going to do is, at the far end of the path here, because we're going to have paving slabs down the central path, my dad's going to build like a little potting bench at the end there with like a big bin underneath for the compost. So that's going to go at the end. Um, and then we're going to make this staging so it folds down um, so obviously we can use it for the seeds and all the seedlings in in the beginning of the year and then when all the seedlings are gone we can fold it down and then grow other things there this side hasn't got any staging which is why we've just put this little this little tray unit thing up there just because we're running out of space but I think my dad wants to grow tomatoes along this side um, and then I think he wants to grow some potatoes for Christmas dinner. I'm not entirely sure. I know that he's going to have a greenhouse up at the allotment, which is going to be an unheated one. So he's going to grow quite a few things up there, like cucumbers and, and melons, I think, and a few potatoes and things up there. So, But this one's going to be heated. And we've got, we've got this little heater down here for now, which actually lives in our camper van. But it's got, like, um, it's got a frost setting so it's been quite handy but I mean right now it's 20.5 celsius now we put the we put the thermometer in the shade just to give it a true reading because obviously if it was in the sun it would be like up in its 40s um, which isn't good and we're having to actually open a few of the windows now because we want to keep it at about 20 it's really really hot in here I might take my coat off in a minute 
Um, but no, I really, really love having a greenhouse. It's been great. Uh, so I'll just go through, um, through a few of the seeds that we've sown. Now, most of these are my dad's because obviously we share the greenhouse. Um, and he's got tomato seedlings. He's got coriander and what else has he got? Cauliflower, cabbage. He's got leeks and he's got basil because he's going to grow basil with the tomatoes. He's got onion sets over here as well. He, start, he starts them off in module trays. He did it last year and it, it worked really well, so he's got them. And he's also got some leeks which he planted up last year. So they're getting quite nice and strong now. Um, and I have just sown some flowers. Now I've sown some wild carrots, some oxide daisies, some candy floss poppies, some dianthus, some sea holly, some scavius, some junior sunflowers. Um, and I've also sown a globe artichoke. I've sown three globe artichokes, but I only need one. Uh, so I thought I'd sow three just in case. And I've also sown some red cabbage. So it's been it's been quite busy <laughs> and I've got sweet peas down here now these are actually getting too big as you can see now I s when did I sow these oh I sowed them on the 17th of January and I have made notes in my in my little gardening journal to sow these later just because they're just too big now I've pinched them out so they are quite a nice they are sort of separating off nicely but they're just getting too big now and it's still a little bit too cold to put them out um so what i might do is we've got a little cold frame as well i'll show you that later so i might just pop them in there just to hopefully slow them down a bit because they're just too big um and also what i've done is i've sown some perennial sweet peas now they're actually in the in the front room on the windowsill <laughs> just because it's quite nice and warm in there um, and and they've all when well, they haven't all come up, but the majority of them come up. It took ages for them to come up, um, but it'd be interesting to see what the um, what the perennial sweet peas will be like. I'm going to put them on the archway just because I'm always going to have sweet peas there um, with the munchkin pumpkins and the bolotti beans. Um, but that's it. That's all the sewing we've done. There's obviously still plenty plenty of sewing to do um, but for now that's about it yeah that's it good because it, it's starting to get a bit full up <laughs> but there's going to be lots to do in April so much to do but obviously don't rush to get your seeds outside yet because it's still I think it's still too cold anyway there's still risks of frost uh, so don't just don't rush to get them out because there's nothing worse than then putting your seed, your lovely little seedlings outside or putting your potatoes in the ground just for frost to completely swipe them out. Um, so they'll be staying in the greenhouse for now until it gets a little bit warmer. Um, but that's about it. So this is only a little episode just because I thought I'd show you how to do the cranberry because the cranberry desperately needed to be planted out. And you haven't seen the greenhouse yet, so this is the greenhouse. Oh, actually... I nearly forgot about this. There's some peas in guttering. I don't think you can see just yet. I'll show you in a minute. But my dad's put some some of his peas into guttering on the side of the greenhouse. Now what he's going to do is when they're ready to go out, it will just be a matter of digging a trench up the allotment and sliding them out of the gutter into the trench. Um, Hopefully it's going to be easy. I think he thinks it's going to be easy, so it'll be quite interesting to see <laughs> how how easy it is to do. Um, but obviously I'll um, film all that just so we can have a little laugh if it goes wrong. <laughs> no, I'm sure it'll be all right. Um, and also, I keep finding things. I've got a few bulbs in here. There's also um, a dahlia as well. Now I've just put them up just because they weren't well I didn't have the bed ready to put them out in up the allotment so I just popped them into pots and kept them in the greenhouse um oh yeah that's definitely it I haven't missed anything that's it <laughs> so I just want to say thank you for watching and I will see you all next time